Welcome to our digital worship for Sunday, January 22nd, 2023. As we gather together, I ask you to join with me as we come together for confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin and uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Summon us into your light and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 29. The Lord is my light. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the rock, under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent 
sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I do seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Our second reading is from Paul's first letters of the Corinthians, the first chapter. Paul writes, Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and there be no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean to say, what I mean is that each of you say, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of Stephanus, but beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region of, and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went from there and saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending the nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. 
Lord God, in your company may we go. Where, we, where your love goes, may we also go. May we follow your footsteps where they lead, and may we seek your way, your presence, your kingdom in the midst of our world. Amen. So I want to still have some magic in the midst of my life. I want to believe that God is a part of this world and that God is active in the midst of things. And so I guess that infects the way in which I go about my life. I, I go into each new situation. I've always done this, you know, with this vision of, okay, let's see what God has in store for me. Let's see what it is that God has done for me. Whether, and, I, and again, I think I've always had this, this desire to make the world a better place and to be, to be in harmony, to be in, to be in step with where God wants me to go in the world. I, that's, I, I think that's always been my desire, my vision, my, my goal. And, and perhaps that's why throughout my life I feel like I've been caught up in this. Even before I was a pastor, it was the, that, but God, I want to go where your footsteps lead me to go. I want to, to see the people who you call me to see. I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of a world where you are active in the midst of it. But I also know that there are times where it's hard to maintain that type of openness to, to God's presence in the midst of the world, in the midst of my life. My, li my, my faith is not one of these things to where it's this con continual line up. It's much more of, you know, an up and down. And there are lots of times where I have lots of questions and there are other times where you know, I can just bask on the mountainside and say, God, I get it. But I think part of that is the questions have always made me willing to go and to seek and to wonder and to question. Now, we have the, the initial disciples, Simon and Andrew, James and John, fishing. And I know for a lot of people, a good day fishing or a bad day fishing is better than a good day of work. But I don't know that uh, that applies when fishing is your work, when it is your, it, when it's no longer a hobby, it becomes that which you have to, to pour your, your sweat and your blood into. And, and again, I think that's always the, the danger with a person's hobby becoming their career is that this which once gave me life, this which once I found real peace and joy in becomes that which is menial, that which is that daily task, that which I have to do, not that which I want to do. And I think, and again, I feel very fortunate that I'm able to do something that I love doing. But I think we can also get very inundated with the routine of, okay, this is what I do on Monday. This is what I do on Tuesday. This is what I do on Wednesday. This is the TV schedules for Thursday, you know, to where we begin to, um, we begin to map out our lives by the, the activities 
that we, we set for things. And I wonder if sometimes we don't leave the space for adventure, that we don't leave the space for God to walk into and interrupt our lives, that we don't leave the space for God to be present in the midst of it, that we just let the routine be that which shapes and molds us. And sometimes we need that road that takes us beyond our own front door. You know, when Jesus comes up to the Sea of Galilee, we don't know if Simon and Andrew and James and John know who he is or what he's about at this point. He's, he's come to Capernaum. He's been in this area for at least some little bit of time. But to come up to the lake shore and to say, come, follow me, leave what you know behind and, and come. Let's go out. I'm going to make you fish for people. I'm going to make you do something you haven't done before. I'm going to show you a new way of what can be. I think an awful lot of people would have said, no, that's, I appreciate the offer, but I'm just, just fine where I am. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. I'll keep stringing day after day together, and eventually, you know, it'll be fine. But I wonder if, if Jesus saw in Simon and Andrew and James and John people who were open to what might be, to what could be if they were to leave their nets behind, if they were to leave their boats behind, if they leave their families behind, if they, if they go. And I, again, I, on the one hand, I get this, I've, I've tried to live this life, and I also understand the reality that now I do have family who I'm responsible for. I do have other people who I have to take into account when I, when I go out and try and do things. And I do think that there are times where, where we let go, and we just don't bother to see life as an adventure anymore. But the one who created us, I believe, created us for more than just the routine. I don't believe we were ever meant to be machines. I don't believe that we were ever meant to be just people who lived from day to day, from show to show, from meal to meal, from paycheck to paycheck. I don't think the, any of these things were meant to be the things that define our life. I believe that God created us for something more. I believe God created us to come and seek where God is at in the world. Now, sometimes that means staying in the same place. Sometimes that means going and seeking in, in various ways. Maybe it's seeking in the, the job that you do or the family that you do, or maybe it's seeking job, uh, seeking God in the midst of the things that bring you life and joy, or maybe it's in the relationships. I, I don't know what the answer to that is, but I do believe God has placed within us a desire to be in God's presence and to seek out God in the midst of this world. And I believe God calls us into more than just a day-to-day -day existence. I do believe God calls us into an adventure. You know, one of the things that you, if you spend a lot of time working with church, you'll uh, pick up pretty quickly. Sometimes we as church have gotten too much of being into the routine as well. Now, I have nothing against the, uh, the regular pattern of what we do in worship. I love it. It's, it's, it's important to me. It's vital to me. But I also wonder if sometimes for a lot of people, and perhaps maybe for men especially, they feel like it's just one more set of things that they need to check off their list, one more set of routines, and it's lost lost the adventure in a world that has told them to settle down maybe they hear 
the church and God telling them to do the same thing. And yet I wonder if that was what we were supposed to do. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, I, I, I want a bunch of wild men and wild women out there. But I kind of believe that Simon and Andrew and James and John When Jesus came and called them, he was calling them away from that which was routine. Calling them to come and find a new way of being. Calling them to be a part of this this kingdom of God present on earth. And they were open enough to leave their boats behind. To leave the waters behind to leave their families behind and to see where this journey with Jesus might take them. And I wonder if maybe if you listen for the ways in which Jesus calls you to follow, that you too might find something new in the midst of your life. If you too might find something different than what you expected. That you might see a little magic in the midst of the world. That you might be open for the adventure that calls you away from that which you know. I don't know what it means for you. All I know is that I keep doing this because at some point I got snared in the nets and I am really curious about each new day that the Lord brings and where it is that God continues to lead me on this journey. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift up this world that you love. Renew your creation and give wisdom to all your people who share in your responsibility to care for the world. Give wisdom to the leaders of nations, states, and cities to care for your people and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Protect and bless all who sacrifice to guard our freedoms, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Ethan, Evan, Luke, Michael, Ryan, Spencer, Sydney, Tyler B., and Tyler G., Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We lift up before you Aubrey, Avery, Betsy, Billy, Bob, Brenda, Campbell, Carleen, Cohen, Dennis, Denver, Donna, Donnie, Eliza, Gary, Jamie, Jan, Judy, Karen, Lori, Linda, Maureen, Melissa, Mike, Roger, Sandy, Tom, and Wayne, and the family and friends of Joyce Anderson, Medrick Rogers, Walt Laughlin, and Yvonne Keebler. 
as well as those we lift up in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA in the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today First Salem Lutheran Church in Roscoe, St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Streetport, and the NTNL Public Witness Team, and P Public Witness for Peace and Justice Team. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now in trust and in hope we commend you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. May God's peace rest upon you as you gather together with your friends and family at home. So this is also the part of the service where we would collect our offering, and so I want to say thank you for those who make this ministry at Rejoice possible. I'm thankful for you allowing me to do the ministry that I do, or Pastor Adam to do the ministry that he does. I'm thankful for the, the facilities we're able to use, the equipment we're able to use to, to send our messages out into the world, but also the, the very tangible hands-on ministry that we do both in our community and throughout the world. And so thank you for being a part of that, and you are the ones who make this possible. So if you would like to contribute to Rejoice, there are several ways you can do that. You can always uh, send a, a check to our physical address at 12,000 Independence Parkway, Frisco, Texas, 75035. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link right below this video that should take you to uh, Tithely, which allows you to give electronically. If you go to the, our website, rejoicefrisco.com, there's a Give Now button on our website. Or you can download the Tithely app on your phone and select Rejoice Lutheran Church of Frisco, Texas, and, and give that way. But if you give, however you give, thank you. Thank you for making this possible for all of us. At this point, we're going to prepare for communion. Communion is a central part of our worship here at Rejoice. It's a place where we trust that Christ meets us. And I know that if you're watching this, you, we're separated by distance, but we do believe that Christ can be present with us as we celebrate together. So I invite you to gather together bread and wine as we prepare to celebrate. We gather together. And we remember how in the night in which he was betrayed, how our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took a cup, and after he given thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. May Christ be present with you as you celebrate together in your households.
gather today. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, with this meal you have united us with Christ and also with each other. Send us now in the power of your spirit that we may reflect your love into the world through the power of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. As God has claimed us as his own in Christ, we seek to follow Christ through these marks of disciple life, praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.